paganism, if I was going to speak in general terms, is a religion that looks back to pre-Christian religion and myths and draws on those myths and those practices and those rituals in a creative way and puts them together in a creative way to deal with modern problems. And different, you know, there's as much variety among pagans as there is among Christians, so you can't really generalize very much. But um, depending on the type of paganism you're talking about, there's going to be more or less, um, you know, creativeness in the, in the um, you know, in, in drawing on these ancient sources. So one of them, one of these, one of these symbolic concepts that drew me to paganism that I really responded to was um, the myth of the dying God. And this is what I talk about in the second part of the article, the second article. And the dying God myth, actually, it's really, although there are ancient examples of it, and Attis, which is the, is the name of, uh, of an ancient God, he's, he's the name in the, in the title of the article. He's an example of a dying God. But uh, although there are examples of dying gods in ancient paganism, the, the idea, this archetype of the dying god was really an invention of the late 19th century. It's an invention of James Frazier, who wrote The Golden Bough. And Frazier's um, uh, unstated goal in uh, writing about the dying god was actually to debunk Christianity. He wanted to show all these ancient examples of gods that died, you know, and and therefore, he wanted to imply uh, that Christianity was bunk because look at all these uh, ancient pagan religions that had dying gods. And the Christ figure is just another one of these ancient dying gods. Actually, people still make this argument today. Uh, the argument didn't really work out because Christians looked at it and just said, well, that's great. Look at all these you know, precursors like symbolic intimations or, or like prophetic suggestions of Christ, who is the the culmination of all these uh, figures, and then pagans, contemporary pagans, looked at it and just said, "Oh, it's all great. You know, um, we'll we'll take it all. We'll take the Christ figure, and we'll take all these other uh, dying God figures, and we'll we'll um, we'll use all these symbols." And um, so, the basic idea of the d dying God in its modern form is that. Um, I'll just kind of tell the story. There's a there's a god who was born on the winter solstice to the goddess, and his uh, over the course of an, one year he matures, um, mates with the goddess, um, and then is in some form or another killed and dies, and then is later either reborn or reborn in the form of his offspring or something like this. And the underlying, and this happens, you know, in the in the winter solstice, he is he's he's born, and then in the springtime he grows up, and in the summer um, makes love to the goddess, and in the fall is is sacrificed, and and then uh, and then is reborn again in the winter. So this, you know, from that when you when you describe it that way, you think, well, what does that have to do with Climate change, what does that have to do with really anything? The underlying message of that story is that death is a part of life. It is a necessary part of life. And without death, you don't get life. Um, and this is very literally true. You think, you know, if you've ever composted, you know, you then you, you've experienced this in a very visceral way. Death, you, you, you know, life feeds on death. And this this story this myth is very different than the story or the myth which is driving our culture you know our culture is is built on this myth of progress we you know there's there's no death we are just continually triumphing one triumph over the other you know uh, battling back the forces of nature uh, left and right <clears throat> and this this myth i think presents a very different paradigm for 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 our society and when <clears throat> excuse me when i when i'm thinking about 
what do we do in the face of climate change? What do we do in the face of the fact that we very may very well uh, not survive as a species? It, it occurred to me that, well, this myth of the dying God offers at least some resources for thinking about that. And, and uh, what, what the myth of the dying God tells me under these circumstances is um, that, of course, we're going to die. Uh, we were always going to die, even if, you know, you want to project it out as far as possible, even if humanity survived a millennia uh, or, or eons, eventually our sun will burn out, you know. And we, every, you know, every other species has at some point passed away. And it is tragic. You know, that, that's a part of the story of the myth of the dying God. It doesn't diminish the tragicness of the sacrifice, the tragicness of death. But there's also the fact that, um, you know, it's unavoidable. And we have one of two responses to this reality. One is to embrace it or one is to deny it. And our society has the you know, by following this this myth of progress, um, we have been on a track of denial. We deny um, our own our own mortality in a, in myriad ways. We deny our collective uh, mortality. By in in fact, um, you can think of human civilization in a way as one as a, a giant exercise in denying our mortality. Um, I tell this story in the, in the article about my son when he was 13, he was starting to question Mormonism and, um, among other things, the thing is the thing that was really stressed about or distressed about was the possibility that he was going to die. And, you know, I, I tried to help him through as much, as best as I could because I myself don't believe in an afterlife and um, uh, but I tried to help him come to terms with it. And, and what, where he came to rest is kind of where I came to rest and a lot of atheists and uh, religious naturalists that I know come to rest. And that is, well, we're going to die, but at least, you know, at least our civilization is, will continue to carry on and progress and, and, you know, and the accumulated knowledge of all humanity and we'll just keep rising and rising and rising and um, that's not true either. You know, it turns out that's, uh, that's a myth. Uh, well, every civilization before us has died uh, and ours is going to die too. The real tragedy is that ours is going to die in a, in a spectacularly destructive way. You know, we're not just going to take out, um, you know, some local bioregion or the, you know, the Nile Delta. We're going to take out planet a good part of the planet life is going to survive but we're going to take out a good part of, of biological diversity on our way out the door and that's that's a whole new level of tragedy but um in accepting it and then figuring out a way to to live meaningfully in the context of that acceptance i think that's that's the challenge that we have and i think that's for me, that's that's one the, the myth of the dying god helps me um, hold that truth before me and look at it and and then um, consider how to be how to live meaningfully in the, in that context.